This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. The Watchman Program. Evangelist and commentator Peter Salemi. Bringing you the truth about today's world news in the light of Bible prophecy. Hi, this is Peter Salemi. You know, I have a friend of mine that owns a flower shop, and he says that one of the busiest days of the year that he has is Valentine's Day. He says a lot of men, mostly men, line up in his shop, and it goes on all day long. They line up in his shop to buy, and they want to buy flowers for their wives or their girlfriends because it is February 14th, and it's Valentine's Day. They buy cards. A lot of men take their wives or girlfriends out to dinner and so on and give, these pe and give their wives and girlfriends gifts because, of course, it's Valentine's Day. Now, has anyone ever stopped to think where Valentine's Day came from? Again, you and I were born in a ready-made world. We didn't come up with Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was already here. Valentine's Day has been around for thousands of years. Have you ever looked it up? You ever wonder where Valentine's Day came from? A lot of people think it's Christian. They call it Saint Valentine's Day. He's one of the saints of the Roman Catholic Church. So they think it's Christian, but when you look into it, a lot of these customs did not come from the Bible. These customs actually came from paganism, and of course it's been wrapped up and dressed up and became part of the Christian religion, the Christian church, but in reality it's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, I well, hmm, well, guilty. <laughs> Download your free booklet, Is There Really a Hell Fire? at BritishIsrael.ca or call or text for a free hard copy at 905-447-4415 or 416-898-7407. Did you know that the ancient pagan Romans celebrated a festival on February 15th? We actually started on February 14th, the night of the 14th into the 15th. They celebrated a festival in honor of the god Lupercus. And Lupercus was a mighty hunter of wolves. Now during this festival, connected with this festival, was an ancient pagan practice of what they call today going steady. Teenagers were going steady with their, you know, men and women would get together and they would start to go steady, which of course led into fornication. And the Encyclopedia Britannica says that this custom of going steady is merely a rebirth of an old custom handed down from the Roman festival of the Lupercalia, celebrated in the month of February when names of young women were put into a box and drawn out by men as a as chance directed. This is under the article of St. Valentine's Day. This festival of Lupercalia had to do with love, had to do with hero worship, and this uh, god was a mighty hunter. Now when Constantine came on the scene and he uh, made Christianity the official religion of the empire, there was some talk in the church of getting rid of a lot of these ancient pagan festivals, but the Roman citizens wanted none of it. A lot of Roman citizens were still pagan and they're still celebrating these festivals. And so they agreed to uh, keep these holidays going on, except for the, uh, the gross uh, sexual practices that the ancient pagan Romans used to do. They kind of got rid of that part. And then it wasn't until the time of Pope Galatius that this holiday of the festival of Lupercalia became a Christian custom, quote unquote, from uh, Custom and Holidays Around the World by Dobler, where he says, as far back as 496, Pope Galatius changed Lupercalia on 
February 15th to St. Valentine's on February 14th. So they Christianized the holiday. They took a pagan holiday and put a Christian label on it, and it became a Christian festival when it's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ, but it's got, but it's got everything to do with paganism. So why did he call it Valentine's? Now, the word Valentine was, a, of course, a common Roman name at that time. Now, Valentine comes from the Latin word Valentinius. And a, a proper name, this is a proper name, and it was derived from the word valens, meaning to be strong. This is from Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. It literally means to be strong, powerful, mighty. And of course, Lupercus was a strong, powerful, mighty hunter. Now, this word Lupercus, the Greeks called him Pan. The Semites called Pan Baal, according to the classic dictionaries. And of course, Baal, mentioned so often in the Bible, was merely another name for Nimrod, the mighty hunter. And this is why he's called Valentine's, because he was a mighty hunter. Lupercus was a mighty hunter. And of course, Valens means strong, powerful, mighty, and so on. So it's all connected, and it all stems back to Nimrod of the Babylonian religion. If you notice Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 9, Nimrod is called the mighty hunter. And of course, uh, there was a proverb in ancient times talking about Nimrod, who was called the mighty hunter before the Lord. He was their hero, their strong man, their Valentine. And that's where Valentine's comes from. Now, attached to this name, Valentinius, is the word Sanctus. And Sanctus was just a common title of any of those ancient pagan hero gods. And so here we see the god Lupercalia, called Valentinius, call, is now called Sanctus Valentinius, or Saint Valentines. And of course, the church adopted a lot of these names, a lot of these practices and festivals, and dressed it up and called it Christian. But when you strip it all down, it's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's got nothing to do with any Christian martyr. And it has everything to do with paganism. And of course, the origins go all the way back to the Babylonian mystery religion. But it's interesting that we see a church. We see a church taking a lot of this paganism and adopting it as its own and calling it Christian. And in Revelation, the 17th chapter, here we see a church. A woman is a symbol of a church. Here we see a church stamped on her forehead. It's called Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. A great church that's ruling over multitudes and tongues and nations and peoples, preaching her doctrine, calling itself Christian, but really her doctrines are satanic. When you read Revelation, the 13th chapter, they really are satanic and they have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, and it has everything to do with the Babylonian mystery religion. And this is where Valentine's Day all comes from. Now, does God want us to mix paganism with Christianity? A lot of people think we should. A lot of people think that God really doesn't care uh, how we worship Him as long as we worship Him. But what does God say? Now, remember, it doesn't make a bit of difference what I'm telling you if there is no God. If there is no God, then religion is purely a devising of man, and we can worship God any way we want to. But if there is a God, and there is, and if he thunders out, Jeremiah 10, verse 2, learn not the way of the heathen, the customs of the people are vain, verse 3, well, then it matters a great deal, doesn't it? If there is no God, then don't worry, but there is, and he says, learn not the way of the heathen. And if you're God, I think you, have, you should have a say on how you should be worshipped, don't you? If you're the king of the universe, I think you should have a say on how you should be worshipped. Now notice what Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, verse 29 through 32 says. God says this, When the eternal your God shall cut off the nations from before you, whether you go to possess them, and you succeed them, and you dwell in their land. Here is Israel moving in to dispossess a lot of these hate, pagan heathens, and of course they had their customs and their religions. And God says in verse 30, take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before you and you inquire not after their gods. God says don't inquire after their superstitions, their religions, their rituals, their festivals. Don't inquire and saying, 
How did these nations serve their gods? Did they have jaw sticks? Did they have prayer wheels? Did they have idols? Did they have uh, pos pos uh, processions where they would carry their gods in these long processions and so on? Did they do these things? How did these nations serve their gods? Even so, I will do likewise. Now, what's the context? Notice verse 31. You shall not so do unto the eternal your God. So God says, don't take these pagan heathen practices, turn around and do it to me. God says, don't do that. You shall not so do unto the eternal your God, for every abomination to the eternal which he hates have they done to their gods, for even their sons and their daughters they have burnt into the fires to their gods. Whatsoever thing I command you, observe to do it, you shall not add to it, nor shall you diminish from it. God says, no matter what Frank Sinatra used to sing, do it his way, not your way. Download this free article. The, the Origins of St. Valentine's Day, free of charge, off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.